Okay, so in the last video, we covered a lot of graphing uh, equations that were in that slope intercept form using a table. Um, we didn't really cover any that had uh, that were in that standard form. So here's an example of, our, of an equation in standard form. Now here, again, we can pick numbers to plug in. Issue is that it's going to be up to us to pick numbers that are clever, uh, and sometimes we might fail when we're picking numbers. And that's something that you, with practice you gain and you get better about picking numbers that don't end up causing you trouble. So always zero is a good thing to start with. Um, in this case, we're actually going to get lucky. Let's do x is equal to zero first. We are lucky because both of our coefficients, our a and our b from that standard form, uh, divide evenly into that constant of 6. So when we get down to 3x is equal to 6, solving for y is fairly straightforward. We just get y is equal to 2. No gross fractions at all. So first point we have is 0 comma 2. We can do the same thing with our y. We can set it equal to 0. We have 2x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 6. Eventually, you stop writing this term because you know that it's just going to be 0. That's why you're choosing it. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep it as we're learning. So again, we're lucky. 2 divides evenly into 6. So we found our other uh, point. Now, technically, this is enough to graph a line. We really only need two points. But the issue is we may just be, um, if we have one mistake here, we're not going to be able to catch it. So we should choose one more thing. Um, here's my strategy whenever I'm dealing with something in the standard form. Look at your two coefficients, your two and your three. Two is going to be the easier one to work with. All you have to do is make sure that what's on the other side is even. So it's going to be a lot easier for us to try plugging in for y to solve for x, because then we're just dividing by 2. I mean, worst case, we're going to end up with something 0.5. So let's not be clever the first time we plug into y. Let's choose our easiest, our second easiest number to work with. 0 is the easiest, 1 is the second easiest. So we plug in 1, we get 2x plus 3 times 1 is equal to 6. And when we go to solve this thing out, right now we should already be recognizing that bad things have happened. We have made ourselves a fraction or a decimal, and we don't necessarily want one. Now, this is not terrible or bad. Um, I'm still going to put this ordered pair. Remember, I did solve for x second, so that's going to go here in the x section, and we plugged in a y to get that. Um, but I don't like having a fraction or a decimal in one of my three major points, especially not one in my two. Uh, this is good enough to use as a check, but it's not the best. So hopefully, though, we kind of learned a lesson while we were working with this one. Our problem was here. Our 3 times 1 was odd, so when we subtracted it from the 6, this side, our right side, ended up being odd. If this was even, I wouldn't have gotten in any trouble. So if I wanted to uh, maybe choose a different number and try it out, I would try something that makes my y term even, so that way when I subtract it, I'm still even on the other side. Again, this is the sort of thing that just takes practice to recognize and realize how to manipulate this so that you get pretty answers out. But if I try out 2, now we have 2x plus 6 is equal to 6. Oh no, this was a bad one to choose. It was already my answer here. Blarg, I'm just going to get x is equal to 0 again. All right, scratch it. Let's try something different. Let's do y is equal to, uh, let's do something else, even 4. So 2x plus 3 times 4 is equal to 6. I, I could have done that too. I just would have gotten the exact same point I already got before, which was silly. So we got 2x plus 12 is equal to 6. And 2x is equal to negative 6 gives us x is equal to negative 3. All right, that's at least a new point. We can put that in there, 4 comma negative 3. And now I have four points, which is one more than I really need, um, two more than I need need, but um, 
enough to graph this beautiful thing. So we went all the way over to 4 for our x's, positive 2, and negative 3 for our y's. So that should be enough for me to plot all these points. So our first point was at 0 for the x's, 2 for the y's. Uh, then we had a 3, 0. And then we had that weird wonky point that's at 1 and a half. 1 and a half is somewhere between 1 and 2, comma 1. So that does look pretty good in terms of where it fell. And then our last feel-good point was at 4, negative 3, which my spacing is terrible. That's unfortunate. But uh, hopefully we can kind of see, minus my spacing issues, if I had had nice graph paper, something in that direction. Again, I, I should have had a better uh, sketch there. But hopefully that gives you an idea how we can handle things that are in that standard form that have this A and B uh, here. Is just try to pick clever numbers, especially pick zeros and see how they work. If you get these fractions or decimals out, keep them, graph them. You can still use them for the check even if they are not really uh, reliable to actually use for the graphing. In fact, let's talk a little bit more about what those zeros were. Those zeros that we plugged in are something we call intercepts. Woohoo! All right, we have two intercepts. One is the x-intercept. And this is the point at which a graph crosses the x-axis. And the y-intercept is the same thing. We would just change this to y and this to y. So the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let us uh, let me redraw a little less terribly that graph from before, a little more large. So here was our beautiful thing. We crossed at those two points. We had uh, 0, 2 and 3, 0. So if we look at that graph from before, our y is equal to, what was it, 2x, oh no, none of that. <laughs> our uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. For this graph, we had a x-intercept where this crossed the x-axis this one, and a y-intercept where it crossed the y-axis. And I've had students who can't keep their y and their x straight uh, who told me that this is how they remember their y-axis. It's the one that actually has a line that points down if you write your y's like that, but I never do. Um, one thing about your intercepts, you do want to write them as ordered pairs, so our x-intercept was actually at 3 comma 0 and our y intercept was at 0 comma 2. Um, well, you just need to know these two definitions and also how to find them or locate them on a graph. So finding them is straightforward. This thing is plugged in. So I don't know why it did that pop-up. Uh, finding our intercepts. And this is actually true for a lot of graphs and not just linear equations. To find your x-intercept, you're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. This is true because when your y is equal to 0, you haven't moved up or down, right? This is your y up and down. So when y is 0, you are on the x-axis and you're able to find that point where you cross it. So that's really what you're looking for with your intercepts. And then to find your y-intercept, you do the exact same thing, except you're setting x equal to 0, because you're saying, don't move right or left, just tell me far, how far up or down I need to go. And you're going to be solving for your y. So that's how you find intercepts. Uh, finding intercepts, if they work out nice and evenly, is the easiest way to graph your equations that are in standard form. 
So I'll do one more example. If you already get it, you don't need to watch it. Um, if you want to test it on your own, I say I'll write this down and then you pause, try it, and then check your work versus mine. So let's do one more example. Let's do 4x minus 2y is equal to 12. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to find the intercepts and graph. So again, pause the video now. Try this on your own if you're trying this out. So for our intercepts, we are just going to go ahead and plug 0 for both of them. So we got x equals 0. This is going to find our y-intercept. So 4 times 0 minus 2y is equal to 12. Negative 2y is equal to 12. y is equal to negative 6. So we just found one intercept. This is 0, negative 6. This is our y-intercept. Okay, so 0, comma, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Imagine I actually had tick marks there. I wasn't lazy. Um, and then to find your... Uh, to find the x-intercept, set y equal to 0. So 4x minus 2 times 0 is equal to 12. 4x is equal to 12. You're realizing hopefully now that this me setting this equal to 0 and actually writing this out is silly. I can literally just kind of cover this up and then solve the resulting equation. In fact, that's uh, normally what I do in, when I have a whiteboard and I can put my finger over it. I cover up the variable that I'm setting equal to 0, that whole term. So when we finish this, we get x equals 3, and then we have our x-intercept. So 1, 2, 3. Again, I'm bad that I don't have my tick marks. And our graph is just going to be those two things connected, and we're done. So we got our two intercepts, and we got our graph. That is a second way to graph a line.